Hello and welcome to another video and today as you can see we're back for some more MotoGP20 gameplay so that's two days in a row now with Marlson are absolutely spoiling us and today we are looking at the second map of gameplay so the video might not be quite as long so obviously I won't have so much to comment on since obviously I covered a lot of it yesterday if you haven't seen my video from yesterday I do recommend you go check it out where I was analysing the first official gameplay that was released by Milestone talk about lots of different things I've got a couple of things to add as well that I didn't quite notice or some of you guys in the comments noticed so I appreciate that and I really uh, appreciate all the support, it's done pretty well so far the video so I'm glad you haven't all enjoyed it but anyway without further ado we'll head on to watching it I suppose so it's actually Quattararo at the new circuit Kimi Ring obviously as you can notice most of the sponsors on the side of MotoGP 20 and I'm guessing that's purely because um, they don't know sort of what sponsors they're going to have yet at Kimi Ring because they've never been there before, usually they have a bit of an idea based on previous years. Uh, the thing I noticed yesterday about the tyres as well that I uh, actually didn't notice, but later on in the lap uh, with Rossi, the different parts of the tyres are different temperatures, so I was right, uh, different parts of the tyre have different temperature, so it's definitely an interesting feature for this game. Hard braking zone then into this right-hander. So I don't actually know anything about the Kimi Ring layout at all, so turn 5 that is. Wow, this player's taking a long time to get on the throttle. Hitting the apex, sort of. So you can see this is the racing line thing here that I was mentioning yesterday. Uh, if we'll give it a quick pause. Um, obviously it's telling you whereabouts on the apex you want to hit. You can see a faint blue one over here as well, which looks like it's going to be pointing to the exit. So we're keeping the flow through. So it always seems a, a corner that sort of comes back on itself a little bit like the Omega corner, but the other way around maybe. So here we go, it's a red here, so that's braking marker I think. And then blue is the point you want to hit. Uh, red is the braking. So for you guys that use Dynamic Racing Line, uh, that's what uh, you will see, I'm assuming. Unless it's a tutorial of some sort, of course. Oh, that was almost a corner cut. You almost would have had your lap took off, but it was quite a nice line, I suppose. Run a bit wide. It's obviously the... I'd say the skill level's not too high of the player, but uh, as we know, every year it's pretty hard to adapt instantly to a MotoGP game, so they might not be too bad. It's just as long as it takes a few... Uh, you know, it can take a couple of days to adapt. The gearing uh, is not great though, I can tell you that much. Look, it seems like first gear seems to be a little bit more viable. Now at the last corner, so really kind of weird apex. And up towards the line then, so that is a lap of the Kimi Ring. So around 1 minute 40 then that was. So a 1 minute 43. So I'm guessing obviously we can go quite a bit quicker than that once you start to get the track laid out. So let's pick this apart a bit more then. I know I didn't actually watch the whole, I don't think I watched the whole thing with the Rossi video because I already watched it but I actually hadn't seen this fully yet I just wanted to have a look at the circuit myself really more than anything so probably you know sort of visual wise we picked out most of the things on the UI like I mentioned uh, during the lap the uh, tyre does actually change different parts of the temperature perhaps it's not so prevalent in this video but there was part of the Rossi video where the uh, the tyre was actually a bit more sort of orange on one side of the tyre, I think it's after it gone to the Arabiata corners, I think it was then. Obviously something else I didn't quite mention was the uh, throttle and brake traces on the the left hand side, so you can have a look at this to the brake and then on the throttle, so he's gone to almost full throttle he never actually got to full throttle I don't think, but you can see the brake and uh, something I actually saw in the comments section as well, because it's quite nice because I've seen the comments of the previous video now so I can sort of uh, talk about them, uh, people noticed the person in the Rossi video didn't use the rear brake at all. So, uh, I think we mentioned that the braking looked a bit more stable on the front. You could brake a lot later. And that's without the rear brake. So it looks like we probably brake quite a bit later. And the lap times are probably going to be a bit quicker. Uh, I've seen some people saying it's going to be MotoGP 18.2. I don't think it's that extreme. But uh, it definitely suit me if it's like that. But, yeah, we know that MotoGP 18 obviously wasn't the best game in terms of the realism. It'd be nice to maybe see a different bike that's not the Yamaha. I think it was a poll, so I think people picked which track they wanted to see and which rider. I think that's how it worked. I think maybe they did a poll on Facebook or something, I'm not 100% sure. But judging by the description, that's what it seems to be. So let's have a look. So yeah, the lines aren't great, but I suppose we're not really here to analyse the video all too much. I suppose we're just here to pick it apart a little bit more. Um, although, like I, like I said, if you haven't seen my video from yesterday, I do recommend you go check it out because I did most of my analysis in that video based on the different things like the graphics, the UI, and a little bit about the physics. But we're talking a bit more about the physics here because I've seen some uh, other people's input. 
uh, also seems to be a bit divided amongst what people think graphics-wise. Some people say it's an improvement, some people say it's worse, some people say they're not going to buy the game because they don't think that the graphics are good enough. Which, uh, definitely in some aspects, maybe they're not... I'd say they're very similar in some aspects, but like I said, the lighting is the main thing I tend to notice. We'll have a look, actually, uh, because something that I didn't uh, pick out at all in the Magello video was pit boards on the left hand s well, it was the right hand side of Mangello, but it'll be the left hand side here. Pit boards in the, are in the game. Although I think they were before anyway. We'll have a look for the pit boards. I couldn't actually see it there. I'll go to the start of the video instead, it make more sense I suppose. Just get the whole length of the straight. Didn't actually see any there, so maybe there's not any at Kimmy Ring. Also the big screen so we'll have a look at the big screen here, because that was something else that was uh, pointed out to me. That it uh, does show the current camera angle, because uh, I think it did it on MotoGP 19 as well. But on MotoGP 18, if you remember, uh, they were just actually static images that were stored in the, the game somewhere with, on those big screens. But it's nice to see those big screens obviously working. I think probably the main thing to talk about really is the Kimi Ring track itself. It looks uh, nice, obviously it's been modelled well, I'm guessing they've gone and laser scanned it over in Finland. And track-wise... I don't know, did Tilka make the track? Does anybody know? I th it seems like a Tilka track to me. But I don't know if Herman Tilka actually is behind this one or not. But it seems, you know, it's got some of his uh, aspects in it, that's for sure. Long straight and uh, sort of corners to come back on themselves a bit. It's kind of a little bit, that's a little bit like a corkscrew kind of section. I didn't mean to right click there, sorry. But it doesn't actually seem like a bad track, although it seems like it might be a bit of a Yamaha track though. Obviously there was the massive straight, uh, if we go, well I won't bother going back, but the massive straight there, that obviously would suit the Ducati a bit more, but uh, the rest of it seems pretty tight, twisty and flowing, so if we get a finished GP later on in the year, it could be quite good, and it could be one of those races that's quite close online as well. A lot of blind sections. But I think that's probably all I've got to say really. Uh, I know obviously I haven't done quite as much you know, in depth as I did in the previous video but I've addressed some of the uh, things that some of you guys have said in the comments. Like I said once again if you haven't seen my previous video at this point um, I'd definitely go recommend checking it out because I do a bit more of a in depth breakdown because it's the first gameplay we've seen so I can pick out more things whereas I don't really want to be repeating myself from yesterday if you've seen that video but uh, apologies for keep mentioning that video but that's why. I was uh, mentioned, of course, because I've mentioned a lot of uh, points in that first video. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this one. If you are new to my channel, do uh, feel free to subscribe because I will be making lots of MotoGP videos and I'll be doing, anytime any gameplays release, I'll be doing a bit of a overview, maybe a bit of a breakdown, picking out little bits maybe that I can find. It's obviously going to be a bit more difficult now that we've had two and I've uh, probably covered just about everything you can tell from a video. But if you have noticed anything that I've missed, do let me know in the comments because I might be able to address it in a future video and uh, let other people know that obviously haven't uh, picked up on that either. But like I said, I hope you have enjoyed that one. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. And I shall see you in the next one.